Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Joel Amegbo. I'm an assistant professor here at the Africa Center. I'm here to, in, uh, to interview Dr. Ashish Malakyash on this uh, very important uh, day and for his contribution in advancing maritime security. Good afternoon again, Dr. Ashish Malakyash. Uh, good afternoon to you. Uh, you have been honored by multiple institutions for your unique contribution in advancing maritime security efforts uh, on the African continent. Uh, in your capacity as an expert, you have facilitated numerous discussions with African governments and regional organizations on strengthening the African collective maritime security architecture. Uh, these efforts have contributed to uh, the Yahoo the uh, Declaration of June 2013 and the Code of uh, Conduct. Mm -hmm. To mark this anniversary, this 10th, year, 10th anniversary of the Yaoundé Declaration, could you please reflect on why signing the Yaoundé Protocol was very significant? Mm. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, reflect a little bit uh, on the work that we've done together to bring uh, greater security to the maritime domain in the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, the significance of the Young Dakota Conduct is very straightforward. Uh, if you look at the data, uh, you'll see a significant decline uh, in the number of piracy attacks uh, in the Gulf of Guinea. So that was our original goal, uh, to bring uh, security uh, to the Gulf of Guinea. And by, you know, if you believe the data, the data is there, uh, and we can uh, celebrate that accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's an important uh, data point. But even more significant than that uh, is the fact that uh, a number of countries, in fact, all countries in the Gulf of Guinea, are collectively working together to address their common challenges. Uh, in the past, before the Yaoundé Code of Conduct, you had all sorts of barriers. Uh, you had uh, sovereignty boundaries mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that were not respected by the pirates. Uh, and those boundaries, those borders, prevented uh, collaboration, uh, prevented uh, the countries in the region from coming together and deal with their common problems. After the Yone Code Conduct was uh, signed, now you have a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. They're sharing information, uh, they're, they're conducting joint patrols, uh, they're creating a culture of collaboration. So I think that, was, uh, that is very, very significant. No, that's a very good point. And I, you know, just to follow up on your, 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 your point, was this protocol achieved you know, in, in, in its 10 years of you know, implementation? What has this protocol really achieved, you know, in your view? Although you kind of mentioned it, could you please elaborate a little bit on that? So I, I think the important thing is that now there's a common vision uh, for security in a maritime domain in Africa. I think this is the greatest achievement. Yes, we can point to a lower number of pirate attacks. Uh, yes, we can uh, point to uh, more joint patrols, uh, more joint exercises. But now there's a common vision. There's a common vision. There's the understanding that you cannot separate uh, maritime security based on boundaries. You cannot. You cannot have one country trying to deal with maritime security, even it's in its own territorial waters alone. You cannot. Uh, so that culture of togetherness, uh, that culture of uh, 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 looking at those maritime problems as one, not as multiple problems, I think th this is a big accomplishment because now African countries uh, in that region, they're, they're all addressing the common problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's, uh, there's um, you know, there's strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. Uh, so now the pirates are dealing with really uh, a collective of countries as opposed to uh, the naval forces of individual countries. So that, for me, that's a big accomplishment. Very good. What are some of the key lessons one can draw from 
you know, your path and uh, your support for, the, for, for this community? Well, uh, the key lesson is that uh, collaboration works. Uh, coming together, pulling efforts, uh, works. Uh, the evidence uh, is, uh, is there. Uh, I think for me that's the, uh, that's the biggest lesson. The second lesson is that uh, African countries were able to overcome all barriers. Their linguistic barriers, uh, they are there are political barriers, there are barriers that pertain to uh, training. Uh, different countries got different types of trainings in different uh, academies, naval academies and so on. Uh, different types of uh, equipment and so on. All of those barriers are being overcome. All those barriers are being overcome. Initially, many people thought that, well, how are you going to have a Portuguese-speaking country and a French-speaking country and a Spanish-speaking country and an English-speaking country all working together? They're, they're working. They're doing it. So that's the, um, uh, that's the second lesson. The third lesson was that this is a difficult process. Uh, it's, not, it's not easy. It's a difficult process. <clears throat> it takes a tremendous amount of commitment. It takes a tremendous amount of political will. Uh, it takes uh, good uh, partnerships. It takes good partnerships. It, it, it takes countries in Africa and countries outside of Africa working together. So that's the third lesson. You know, I think the fourth lesson is that it's, it's possible. It's done. It's, it, it can be done. It's not quite just done yet, uh, but it can be done. It can be done. I'm glad you, you, you uh, quickly noted that, you know, it, it can be done. And you talked about the issue of coordination, uh, the issue of political will. And I think it's quite important for us uh, to also address how it could or it can be done, how the protocol can be improved. In what ways do you think you know the implementation of the protocol can be improved? Well, it can be improved at two levels. Uh, first, uh, we need to see the full operationalization of all the zones. Uh, because as you know, uh, the Ode Code of Conduct calls for the establishment of several maritime zones. Those maritime zones are established, but not all of them are fully operational at the level that is, that is expected. So many, well, some of those zones still need to take a few more steps uh, to get there. That's number one. Number two, how they work amongst themselves. So that should also be seamless. And we're not there yet. There's still a couple of issues uh, of coordination. There's still a couple of issues of information sharing. Uh, they're still they are being worked out. Uh, so it will take um, it will take uh, a little while uh, before uh, before uh, we get there. That's point number one. Point number two, we now need to take the next step which is at the national level. So the architecture uh, is working well at the regional level. If you look at the Gulf of Guinea as a region, it's working well. It's working well at the sub-regional level. Again, ECOWAS, ECAS, at that level, it's working well. But now at the third level, at the national level, how are things happening at each of those countries that have signed uh, the Own Dakota Conduct at the local level. How is it working? Uh, so I think that is the next step. Do they all have the national maritime strategies in place? Do they all have the mechanisms to impose the sovereignty of the state at sea? Do they have those maritime? Because you can have the strategy. But then you have to have the, the institutions 
with the authorities and the resources to actually conduct the work at sea. Now, that is, that is the next step. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to see probably in the next few years is all along the coast, each one of those states having a national maritime, maritime uh, authority whose work is based on a national maritime strategy, whose resources are allocated in a budget, and so that they can actually go out there and do the work that needs to be done at sea. Yeah, it looks like you've already started reading my mind because <laughs> partly uh, uh, I was going to ask about, you know, the next 10 years as we celebrate mm -hmm. your achievements, the achievement of the Yaoundé architecture uh, in 10 years, the anniversary is now. Could you please also share some of the priorities, the key priorities that you see for the next 10 years that one should be focusing on? So when we first started this work, uh, we spent a tremendous amount of time awareness raising, doing awareness raising. Raising the, the awareness at the leadership level, uh, at, the, at, the, at the base level, and everything in between about the importance of the maritime domain. I think we've done that. Uh, we can no longer talk about sea blindness uh, in Africa. Uh, we cannot. So that has been taken care of. But now we need to more clearly make the link between maritime security and prosperity. That link needs to be made very, very clearly. African governments need to understand that their prosperity going forward hinges on maritime security. They cannot achieve prosperity if they completely neglect uh, maritime, the maritime space for all sorts of reasons that you know as well uh, as I do. So that is the next step. Basically, making maritime security real at the national level to enhance prosperity. Because unless you have prosperity, you cannot have security, right? And vice versa. So I think the next 10, 20 years, probably longer, uh, we need to work to ensure that Africa is well connected to the outside world via the maritime highways, because that's, that's where trade happens. That's where trade happens. Africa is connected at the continental level also uh, via the, the maritime uh, highways. So I think that is, that is the, next, uh, the next area of work, prosperity. It's about prosperity. prosperity. No, Dr. Malakiash, again, thank you so much. And as we celebrate the 10th year of uh, the Yaoundé architecture, again, we want to celebrate your achievement, your work, and also uh, your expertise in this, in this domain. Uh, just a final word, do you have anything that you'd like to share uh, to, uh, with, uh, with our audience? Well, I think the, uh, the last thing I'd like to say uh, is that Africa has uh, a very bright future, very, very bright future. But Africa's future depends on how we interact with, uh, with the blue areas that surround the continent. Uh, I think that uh, if we understand the connection between prosperity on land and security at sea, I think we are, we are going uh, uh, to achieve uh, security for all Africans uh, a lot quicker. Dr. Malakesh, again, thank you so much for your time and thank you for your dedication to the African continent. It's a great pleasure and an honor. Thank you. Thank you.